Fairy tales. Often whimsical, always memorable. Fairy tales are offered up by cultures the world over as a fine form of storytelling on whose pages can be found magic, excitement, romance, even salvation. <laughs> Tell that to anyone but the fairy tale's main characters and they'd scoff at you. They might even punch you. What happens in the background of Happily Ever After? Often the fairy dust is reserved for a select few, while the rest of the towns, shires, and villages are left to fend for themselves, or worse, are blindsided by someone else's pursuit of their happily ever after. Their lives often dramatically and irreparably affected by all the magic in the air. Our first story is set in a world you know well. But we're not discussing the fair lady or the naughty prince turned beast turned back into a prince again. Today, our main character is named simply Lennox, but you might know him better, or not know him better, as the carving fork from the Beast's famously cursed French castle. A man who at one moment was a kitchen's assistant from England, and the next a peripheral kitchen utensil himself. A punishment for crimes he most certainly did not commit, Lennox will never get back those four years spent as a carving fork. This is his story. know the story. The Enchantress shows up looking like an old crone. That fucking Quisby of a prince turns her away. She reveals herself as being entirely suitable for being hit on. And that stupid prince grovels like the piece of shit that he is. She's pissed. Understandable. What was not understandable was her taking her wrath out on the entire kingdom. I mean, every last one of us was punished because that prince was a towering knob. I came to his castle to work as an assistant to the chef. I figured a French castle might be a good place to learn a thing or two about food. I'd only been there for three weeks when poof, I get turned into a bloody fork. A fork! I was technically a carving fork, so two prongs were sort of acted like legs. So think about that for a second. Not only am I dealing with this mind-buggering transformation into forkdom, but I've also lost the sensation, or even the illusion, of having my bloody arms at all. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do to deserve that? <sighs> I was used very infrequently. At first because the prince ate all of his meat raw like a ravenous animal, and then after that girl come round, she turned him into a bloody vegetarian. He developed a sort of aversion to dead animals, so the staff stopped cooking up hens and roasts and all the things I'd normally be used for. So instead of being used, I spent the better part of four years in a drawer. The moment that spell was broken, and thank God for that girl who fell in love with him, the moment that spell was broken, I walked right up to the prince and I decked him in his face. They don't talk about that in a fairy tale, do they? So I quit the kitchen job, obviously. Before I left the castle, I nicked some fancy candle holders to sell in town. A fancy pen for myself. And off I went and start my new life. Mark the occasion by getting this nice new vest. Sparkles. Never much cared for sparkles until after I spent time as a fucking fork, and now I find being shiny sort of comforting. I'll become a bit of a poet. If I'm being honest, a bit of a reveller.
like to get myself a little half, half and half. You know, little Brahms and List. Piss drunk, Mary. If I have money, I'll sleep in a bed. If I don't, sleep in a barn or a church. If it's warm, I sleep under a bridge or under the stars. I sleep where I lay down. That suits me. And it's got to, because I don't plan to work for anyone ever again. <laughs> Truth be told, I don't intend to do anything for anyone ever again. I'm living only for myself. Four years lost to be in a fucking fork will do that to a man. So, here's to me. It's like magic. No, fuck magic. Because whenever magic or spells or sorcery being used, that means nothing else is being considered. Certainly not a no-account jack straw like me. But I got two bids for all the wizards and warlocks and enchantresses out there. Us lowly background blokes got feelings too, and we don't want to be turned into fucking forks for God knows how long. Right? Right. Also, side note, the prince, when he was a beast, looked more like a walrus than anything else. This sort of handsome, debonair, gentle giant you've all come to know? Afraid not. Upright walrus with these sort of dodgy claws. Very unfortunate looking. <laughs> Step we on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and arm we go, off on Murray's wedding. Over hillways, up and down, myrtle green and black and brown. Pass the shilling through the town, all for sake of Murray. Step we on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and arm we go, off on Murray's wedding. Plenty herring, plenty meal, plenty pizza, 